Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. I know it's been a long time since we had a new course, but this year is going to be the year of learning and growing. So I want to introduce you to the AWS Certified Developer Associate course. This series is going to be hard and we are going to cover each and every aspect of what this certification wants from us. And if you are new here, please support the channel by subscribing and liking and commenting on the video. I wish you all the best. So without any further ado, Let's begin. The first few sessions are really important and uh, which are always neglected. Understanding the requirements for the exam and what the exam expects you to be and expects you to learn is very important and you should never skip this part. So this applies to everything that we do in life. We need a roadmap to achieve what we want and that's what we are going to do in these first few sessions. The first thing that we need to understand is what the exam wants to validate. Read these lines carefully and try to understand it. Demonstrate an understanding of core AWS services, uses and basic AWS architecture best practices. In the solution architect course, we went into the theory of the major services and we learned how things work and the working principle. But now it's time for us to use that knowledge to build something with the help of the AWS services. Secondly, demonstrate proficiency in developing, deploying and debugging cloud based applications by using AWS. So here as well, you need to understand the requirements of the application and its end users with respect to the AWS best practices. So the exam will validate you on these skills of yours. Not only the knowledge that you have about the services, but also on the terms, like if you truly understand how to develop, deploy and debug the application that you're currently working on using the AWS services. So I hope you got my point here. Let's move on. For the exams, there is a recommended know-how of things that you need to know in order for you to both clear the exam and also be better at development activities that you're going to be doing next. And these are the things that we will cover in this course as well. So the first thing, uh, first you need to have an in-depth knowledge of at least one high level programming language. So in this course, we will be using Python. I know not everyone is aware of Python, but don't worry, I'll explain things in a simple way so that even if you are a beginner, you can understand how the code works. Next, you need to have an understanding of application lifecycle management, like how you plan, develop the application, like writing the code with best practices, how we test it, how we deploy it, and maintaining the application that we work on. Next, the ability to write code for serverless applications. So one thing that you need to understand is that for every cloud service provider like AWS, Google or Alibaba, we have SDKs or what we also call as software development kits that we make use of to write the code for the application we want to develop. Not the actual application. I know you might be thinking that, but the part where we work on the infrastructure deployment. So we need to know that as well. Lastly, understanding the use of containers in the development process. In our solutions architect course, we have covered the part where we have discussed containerization and you should have some knowledge on making use of container frameworks like Docker and which we will also make use of. So remember these points and you have to understand that you need to have certain amount of knowledge on these four points that I just mentioned. If you don't have this, then don't worry, I will try to keep it as simple as possible so that you can learn the things as you go. And along with that, you can learn the other technological stacks that I have mentioned here parallelly. So I know this is hard to comprehend, but in this course, we will work with Python 3, Boto 3 framework. We'll also work with Terraform. We'll also do some coding with CloudFormation and containers. This may not be needed to pass the exam, but it will surely help you know more than what's needed to do good in your cloud journey ahead. 
Now let's try to understand the certification hierarchy of AWS. So we have the foundational level certification, which is the AWS cloud practitioner. So this gives the overall idea around the services that AWS provides along with the billing and account specific service and how we can actually manage them. Then we have associate level certification. So there are three associate level certifications. If you are more of on the architect side of the work and you wish to understand the AWS services and how to build a resilient application on AWS, we can actually go towards AWS certified solutions architect. Then comes SysOps, which is more on the operation side and we won't discuss more on that. But the next one is important to us because this course is all about that. And that is AWS certified developer associate certification. So that is DVA C01. Remember that. SAA C02 was for solutions architect associate and DVA C01 is for certified developer associate certification where we have to take the knowledge that we got on the AWS services and we need to now apply them. So this is more suited for the developers. Before moving forward, I just want to tell you that even though we might have worked with AWS for over three to four years, it's not a guarantee that we are aware of all the services. Like we are aware of all the AWS services and how they work. The certifications that we do are the best way possible to understand and cover different aspects of AWS services. So this is your chance to do that and make sure you keep up the hard work. I hope you got the point. Let's move on. Now let's come to the exam part and what you could expect in the exam. So the AWS Certified Developer Associate or DVA C01 exam is a pass or fail exam. So what does it mean? It means that there are no grades. So the exam is evaluated for a point scale of 100 to 1000 points and the minimum passing marks that you need to score is 720. Remember that. So make sure you remember that and don't think about passing with minimum marks. Always aim high like around 950 to 1000. The more the better. There are two types of questions that you will face. One is multiple responses where you get five options and you have to choose two correct answers. This is the most complicated one because there are two correct answers and you need to choose them both. But if you understand the concepts correctly, you can relate the answers together. You can score a lot of marks in this type of question set. The second one is multiple choice, which you already are aware of, where you get multiple options and you need to choose one. The one correct answer and you need to choose that. Simple, isn't it? So I hope you got the point here. So there are two type of question pattern that you might expect. So one is the multiple response and the other one is multiple choice. Now let's talk about one of the most important parts of the certification. So the exam is not going to validate or test you equally on every service, but it is going to test you on a specific domain that will have its individual requirement and goals. So you can keep a screenshot of this chart because this is your domain wise weightage of how the exam is going to put you to the test. So we have deployment with 22%, security with 26%, development with AWS services takes the maximum of 30%. So this is going to be important. Remember that. Refactoring is 10% and monitoring and troubleshooting is 12%. So as I have mentioned here as well, each section of the exam has a specific weighting. So some sections have more questions than the other sections have. So remember that based on the domains that you're seeing here and the, and the percentage of questions that you're going to get, these are all being divided into domains. Domain 1, Domain 2, Domain 3, Domain 4 and Domain 5. And if you see this carefully, we have 78% of questions coming from the first three domains themselves. So the exam focuses for you to be good at deployment, development with AWS services and the security part. So this is one of the most important thing that you have to remember. And whenever you are trying to relate with what AWS services are going to be important, think of the domains. This will give you the clear idea. And don't worry, we are going to discuss on these domains specifically. So don't skip on any of the lessons that we are going to have. I hope you got the point. Let's move on. Certifications may be cool and all, but they come with a price. And you need to understand that you don't get your money back if you pass or fail the exam. <laughs> so if you fail, then you have obviously lost the amount of money that you paid for the registration. But if you passed, 
at least you're getting the certification done so so if you look at the center that's what you should keep your focus on the format of the exam is you get 65 questions in the exam you will get 65 questions and you have to complete them in 130 minutes so 130 minutes for 65 questions and i already told you they may be either multiple choice or multiple response you can give your exam online or you can book it at a test center where you have to be physically present to give the exam the details about scheduling the exam are in the course itself you can check it out the link is given in the description on how you can schedule the exam and the most important thing is the cost that is 150 dollars remember that yes you need to pay 150 dollars to register for the exam which is around 11,000 rupees indian rupees and i'm not sure about the tax in this but you have to pay 150 dollars for the associate level certifications and this is same for all the associate level certifications like uh, solutions architect and sysops admin so make sure that you think twice before scheduling and if you're confident enough then go ahead schedule it and appear for the exam and you have a list of languages that you can choose from to give your exam and uh, we have like english japanese korean and simplified chinese so based on that uh, you can make a assessment on which language that you want to appear for the best thing about passing the exam is that you get a 50% off discount coupon for your next certification. That's a plus. If you pass this exam, you will get a 50% off discount coupon and that you can apply to your next certification and, and the next exam fees can be reduced to up to 50% of the total exam cost. So that's a plus, isn't it? So if you give a certification, you get a 50% discount coupon. So in this sense, you may understand that AWS wants people to actually appear for more certifications and uh, and that's how the business plan is like, I think. So I hope you got the idea around the cost and how much you need to pay. So there is another thing that you can see here. There is a practice exam. And if you want, you can uh, purchase a practice paper from AWS itself and it costs $20. But I don't know like most people do this or not, but there are 20 questions in that practice paper and that is around $20. So if you want, you can do that. So it depends on you. If you want it, you can do it. Or else if you don't need this, then please don't go with it and save $20 of the chart. So that's all for the introduction to the AWS Certified Developer Associate exam. And remember, these sessions are really important. And the next one is even more important where we will talk about the AWS services. So please make sure that you don't miss out on that. Make sure you have a strong base and this is your foundation. In this series, we will not be covering the basics of AWS. We have already done that. You can find the playlist link for AWS Solutions Architect in the description. You can follow that to get more details on the basics. There is one more important thing that I want you to do. Please subscribe and like the video. It really helps the channel grow. And this lets me make more videos like this. So if your friends or team members are interested, please let them know about this course. So that way you can help someone learn things for free. So that's it for today's session. I'll meet you in the next one. Until then, stay safe, stay healthy. It's Pythonic signing off. <laughs>